This presentation, MD Economics, was created to provide information about loan repayment options to current medical school graduates. It was created by the FIRST for Medical Education program at the AAMC. The FIRST program provides financial information, resources, services, and tools to those trying to understand the complexities of medical student debt. The AAMC is the Association of American Medical Colleges. Let's get started. So now, Dr. Median has graduated from medical school and will need to decide on a residency specialty, a location, and a repayment plan, which is what this presentation is all about. Among the variety of repayment options that are available to Dr. Median, three stand out. Will she choose door number one, which is income-based repayment, or IBR? And what about door number two, forbearance? Or door number three, public service loan forgiveness? That's a new program for federal borrowers who pursue a public service career and could offer significant savings for someone who chooses to open that door. Before making a choice, let's walk through each door and take a look at what's inside. Behind door number one is a repayment plan where what you pay is dependent upon what you earn. The size of your debt does not matter. What you pay is dependent on what you earn. The program caps your payment at 15% of the income above 150% of the federal poverty guideline for the applicable household size. We'll show you that math in a minute, but to cut to the chase, what it means for Dr. Median, who's single in her first year of residency, is she'll earn a stipend of a little over $47,000 and make a monthly payment that's roughly $385. But remember, her monthly interest alone is about $1,000. So even though she's making payments, the size of her loan balance will increase. Okay, for those of you who like this level of detail, here's the calculation that will translate a salary or stipend into a monthly payment in the IBR program. The values in this slide are actual. There is no rounding. First, we see the projected stipend for 2009 for a first-year resident. That's a little over $47,000. Then, you take the federal poverty guideline of 10830 which corresponds to a family of one in the continental United States. You multiply that guideline by 150% to get a total of a little over $16,000. You subtract the $16,000 from the $47,000, and you wind up with nearly $31,000. Take 15% of that, and you get an annual total of a little over $4,600. Divide by 12 yields a monthly payment of $387. The phrase discretionary income refers to the salary above a certain percentage of the federal poverty guideline. If you are a medical school borrower, your exact monthly payment in the IBR program will be dependent upon your household size, where you're living, and most importantly, the salary that you'll be earning or stipend in your first year of residency. Are you still awake? Good. We've changed the background here to blue for a couple of slides as we work through some more math. As you may recall, about 20% of Dr. Median's loan balance is in the subsidized Stafford loan category. So we take 20% of the monthly payment, or about $77, and apply that to the subsidized portion of the loan. Unfortunately, the subsidized portion is generating nearly $200 a month in interest, so the $77 payment winds up with a shortfall of about $116. But here's the nice part. The Department of Education covers that shortfall. That's why it's called the subsidized portion of the loan. Isn't that great? It's really your tax dollar at work. Let's take the remaining 80% and apply that to the unsubsidized portion, and we get about a $466 shortfall at the monthly level. And remember, these are monthly totals. What happens if we work it out to the annual level? Here's the bottom line for Dr. Median's first year of residency while she's in the IBR program. She earns about $47,200. She makes a monthly payment of about $380. $87. On the subsidized portion of her loan, there's a shortfall of nearly $1,400. That's going to be covered by the Department of Education for the first three years that she's in this program. On the unsubsidized portion of the loan, there's a shortfall of around $5,600. That total will be added back in to Dr. Median's repayment when she earns a higher income after leaving residency. Okay, now we're back to the black background. Here's the summary for Dr. Median's four-year residency. She starts out earning a little over $47,000. That rises to about $58,000 by her fourth year. Her payments rise in a corresponding manner, starting at about $385 up to around $500 a month. All told, over the four-year residency, she'll pay about $21,000 on her loans. However, during that time, there's an interest shortfall of also around $21,000. Note that the Department of Education subsidy for the first three years is nearly $4,000. So the shortfall is the unsubsidized portion plus the fourth year of the subsidized. That will bring her repayment balance up to $192,000 from the 171 at the start of the residency through the 21,000 interest shortfall. So what happens after her residency? Dr. Median will owe about $192,000 on her loans. 
the monthly payment is calculated at nearly $2,000 a month. So, as long as Dr. Median is earning a salary after her residency of at least $176,000, she'll make that roughly $2,000 a month payment for about 12 years, and then the loan balance will be repaid. In all, her repayment will total over $300,000. Recall that she borrowed about $150,000 for medical school. That means there is about $152,000 in interest that accrued during her four years of medical school, her six-month grace period, her four-year residency, and her 12 years of post-residency repayment. Let's take a look at door number two. Door number two is the repayment plan known as forbearance. That simply means you make no payments of any kind during your residency. The interest will accrue without a Department of Education subsidy on the subsidized portion of the loan. And after your residency, there'll be a capitalization. That means compared to door number one, that your total amount of repayment is going to be higher. Let's take a look at how high. So here's the impact of no payments during your residency. It's about $51,000 in an interest that will accrue during a four-year residency. As in door number one, Dr. Median still earns a stipend starting at about $47,000 in her first year, up to about $58,000 in the fourth year. But there are no monthly payments of any kind. So the $171,000 owed at the start of residency becomes $222,000 after the residency, following the $51,000 in interest accrual. Here's a very minor technical note. This example that you're looking at on this slide is a assuming that capitalization occurs annually during the residency. Under some criteria, there might be only one capitalization at the end of the residency, in which case the interest accrued would be about $5,000 less. You'll have to talk to your lender to determine your exact loan balance and repayment and capitalization policy. Okay, let's look at repayment after the four-year residency, if Dr. Median had chosen forbearance during her residency. With a 10-year standard plan, you'd be looking at a $2,600 monthly payment. That is, you make $2,600 in monthly payments for 10 years, and your repayment balance will be zero from the starting point of $222,000. At the end of the day, that would mean you had paid about $307,000 to repay the $150,000 that you borrowed in medical school. That, of course, would include $157,000 in interest that accrued during the four years of medical school, the six-month grace period, the four years of residency, and the ten years of repayment. Before knocking on door number three, let's look at another repayment option for door number two. This slide shows a summary for a 25-year extended repayment plan after the forbearance during the four-year residency. In this case, you're making a $1,500 monthly payment for 25 years. At the end of the day, that's about $463,000 to repay the $150,000 that you borrowed during medical school. That means most of what you're repaying is interest. In fact, it's over $313,000 in interest when you consider the four years of medical school, the six-month grace period, the four years of residency, and the 25-year repayment. This may seem a bit overwhelming if you're considering a lower-paying primary care specialty. So are there any other options? Well, have a look at door number three.